Hey everyone, Jason McCann with Mountain Tactical. We've been doing a series on the Tika T3X. In the last episode, we did a deep dive into the bolt, how it functions, and all the components of it. So if you haven't watched that video, go back, take a look at that one. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into the rifle stock that Tika uses on the Tika T3X line. And stick around, because we're going to do some destruction testing on this video. For science. So the most common complaint we hear about the Tika T3X is the Tupperware stock. And yes, it is a polymer stock, and it, it's kind of plain looking. They're trying to hit a budget point for that particular rifle system. But it's kind of funny because we hear nothing but rave reviews over the Rough Tech stock. And as you can see here, they're identical. Obviously, we've added one of our cheek risers to uh, our Rough Tech, but these stocks are identical. They're the exact same thing. The only difference is the Rough Tech has a little bit of textured paint on it and they kind of splatter paint that little kind of black fleck on it uh, on that. But other than that, it's the exact same stock. So let's take a deep dive into our T3X light here and show you what's inside the stock. So removing your action from your stock is very simple on the Tika T3X. You have two action screws on the bottom that utilize a T25 Torx head. So, first thing we're going to do is remove our bolt, set that to the side. I'm going to leave the chamber flag in just so we know there's no round in the chamber. I'm going to rotate the rifle over, remove the magazine, take my T25 driver, really doesn't matter if you uh, loosen the first one or the front screw versus the rear tang screw first or which order you do that. And then from here, a little pull and everything comes apart. So I'm going to set our barrel to action to the side and we'll just zoom in, focus on just the rifle stock. So notice that your action screws are two different lengths. So your shorter one goes to the front of the action. Your longer one goes to the rear tang of the action. They are thread M6 by one. And the T3Xs all have a T25 Torx head on them. The original T3s had a, just a slotted head on them. And then, you know, somewhere after four or five years worth of production, they started, uh, Tika started putting a T25 Torx head on those action screws as well. The action screws that we sell all have the T25 Torx head on them. So when Tika released the T3X evolution of the T3 lineup, most of the changes were to the actual stock. They softened the compound that made up the recoil pad so it was more comfortable to shoot. They actually added a foam insert inside the stock to uh, get rid of that hollow sound that the original T3 had. They also upgraded the grip. So this is the kind of the slanted rifle grip. There's also the vertical grip and it's replaceable. That's a new feature on the T3X. Remove this bolt, which we'll do here in a second. We have our plastic trigger guard. Inside the stock, our recoil lug is press fit. Under this sticker, We'll peel this off in a second. Under this sticker, there's a uh, bolt, and that is used if you want to take advantage of Tika's wider beaver tail forend that you can put on the forend of your stock. And then you have your front swivel stud and your rear swivel stud. One of the more controversial design aspects of the Tika T3 and T3X stock is this little rib structure right here. And this is only on the T3X lights, both stainless and blued. Tika added this rib structure as reinforcement for that featherweight barrel. 
So as we talk about barrel harmonics, which we'll do a deeper dive when we talk about just the barrel on the T3X, the thinner the material around the barrel, the more it's going to whip, the more it's going to be like a little spaghetti noodle moving around. And so when people talk about barrel harmonics, they're actually talking about the barrel's vibration as the projectile moves down the rifling and out the muzzle. And there's multiple tuning devices. Uh, there's, there's little the EC tuner from Eric Cortina. There's other different uh, barrel tuners. There's even Limsaver has a little barrel deresonator device. All of that is designed to limit the barrel harmonics. Tika incorporates that with this rib into their stock. Now, anecdotally, and I can say we've never had an issue with this, but anecdotally, we have heard of customers who have removed that and seen improved accuracy. I can tell you from all the Tikas that we've shot here, I have never touched that and we've never had accuracy issues. So, your mileage may vary, but this has caused a lot of controversy in the interwebs. Probably the second most controversial design choice that Tiki uses is a plastic trigger guard. Hey, it's modern times, plastics are just part of our world, but this is an easy component to replace. You just flip your stock over, give it a good pull, your trigger guard comes out of the stock. And then you could replace it with a billet version uh, of this and you have a much stronger trigger guard than the plastic one. And you'll see on the trigger guard you have your mag release uh, up here. Other than that, it just has the mag well for that that guides the magazine up into the action. We'll set that aside and let's take off the recoil pad. Removing the recoil pad off your stock is a fairly simple endeavor. You just need a number two Phillips head screwdriver and a little lube. You don't want to do her dry. You got to have something uh, on that screwdriver before you stick it in that rubber. So I'm just going to take this kind of general purpose, make a huge mess on my desk here. And Tika just uses wood screws to hold the recoil pad into the plastic. You can see our two little wood screws here. Personally, I don't like leaving those into the recoil pad because I'm usually upgrading my recoil pad. So to pop the heads out, just kind of center it on the screw holes in the action, give it a push, and you'll see these will just pop right out of the recoil pad. Now, I'm going to take these put them to the side. They're both the same length so you don't have to worry about which one was on top or bottom. So let's take a little closer look at this recoil pad. So like I stated previously, one of the huge improvements of the T3 over the T3X is the stock. Now Tika advertised very heavily that they made the recoil pad significantly more comfortable to shoot. And you can see, I mean, the compound is, is softer and it looks like a nice thick recoil pad. However, when you remove it from the stock, you can see it's hollow. So you really only have about a quarter inch, six millimeters of actual recoil pad, recoil absorbing rubber on here. And then you just have this empty space. So there's quite a few recoil pads on the aftermarket uh, for the Tika T3, T3X, Limb Saver, that's our recoil pad of choice. Packmeyer makes a good one. And I'm sure around the world there's other aftermarket options for the Tika T3X. But while this may be better than the T3's recoil pad, with this being hollow and only having that quarter inch to six millimeters worth of recoil absorbing rubber, it's not a huge improvement. But easy to replace. Let's move on. Hey, one of the other upgrades that Tika performed when they went from the T3 to the T3X was they actually filled the stock with a foam block. Now, why is that important? It's because on the standard T3, the stock section here is completely hollow. So you'd be hunting, you'd brush up against uh, a tree or something, and this was like an amplifier, it was like a little drum. And now you can hear, that's pretty inert, that's pretty dead, now that they've inserted the foam into this butt stock. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm just gonna take my screwdriver here, 
pop out this support structure. This is new on the T3X. And, let's see if I can do it blind. <laughs> I'm not that talented, Colin. I'm going to... All right, very silky smooth for the camera, I know. But here's the foam insert that they put inside the buttstock. And with that out, that is what the T3 sounded like. A little better when you had your, you know, recoil pad on there. Still significantly louder than what we just experienced with these components installed. So probably one of the coolest features of the T3X stock that quite honestly Tika hasn't done a good job advertising is the interchangeable grip and forend. Removing the grip, super simple. You take that same T25 Torx head that you use to remove the action screws there is a bolt in the bottom of the grip. Remove that little bugger. And this just pops right out. And then you have your vertical grip, if you want, and that just pops right back in. You put your screw down, and you have a completely new stock without having to pay a whole lot of money for a custom stock. Okay, so to expose the foreign screw to add the beaver tail foreign or other accessories like our Arca light rail utilizes this on the T3X as well, we take our sticker, which most of you have probably already removed from your rifle. This one's just coming straight out of the box. And that exposes another T25 bolt head. So if you're installing our Arca stock, this is the middle screw mount. The front's the swivel screw mount. And our Arca light comes with a, its own swivel stud. But if you're just adding the beaver tail forend, remove this screw, put your beaver tail on, put this screw back in, and again, a very, another very simple upgrade to the, your T3X rifle stock. So about halfway through the T3 production period, Tika upgraded how they installed the swivel studs into the actual rifle stocks. Originally, they just used wood threads on the swivel studs, and those wood threads were designed to cut into the plastic. And over time, wear and tear, that thread would actually eat away at the plastic, and your swivel stud would just pop out, and it was toast. So... About halfway through the T3 production and then just standard on the T3X rifle stocks, Tika started using machine brass inserts into the stock and they put machine threads on the swivel stud. And what they're actually doing is sandwiching the plastic between the brass insert and the swivel stud. And that is the most reliable, bomb-proof way to mount a swivel stud to your stock that will provide a lifetime of service for you. Now for the most important, the most critical component of a rifle stock, the recoil lug. Now there's different recoil lug systems for different rifles and throughout history they've changed as far as the bolt action rifle goes. And a lot of people like a Remington style recoil lug and that recoil lug is sandwiched between the action and the barrel. And anybody who's built a custom rifle before knows that that is a huge weak spot in the Remington system because if you don't have perfectly square faces you're inducing error every single time you sandwich something between the barrel and the action. So what Tika and Sako both do and this this is the same type of recoil lug system that's on the legendary Sako TRG 338 Lapua Magnum I think this will work on our hunting rifles is they embed the recoil lug in the stock and then there's a notch on the action that we'll cover when we do the action portion of the video that that keys into. Now on the original T3 this was an aluminum component which was just silly. I mean aluminum is not a strong enough material to transfer all of that recoil energy from the action to the stock to your shoulder. This is why this is the most important part of rifle stock. This is the component that takes all of that recoil energy, transfers it into the rifle stock, 
into your shoulder and holds that action in place inside the rifle stock. If that action moves inside the rifle stock, your accuracy is going to suffer. And so we had multiple rifles come through the shop, of the original T3s, where people thought they had shot out their rifle because they were having severe accuracy issues. And we'd go in, pull the recoil lug, there was a massive dent in it, we put in one of our recoil lugs, the rifle shot great. So instead of having to rebarrel their their uh, rifle and, and rechamber everything and spend, you know, hundreds to a thousand dollars, it was a thirty dollar part. Super simple. And so Tika it was interesting, I guess, you know, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Uh, they saw us doing this upgrade on rifles all over the world. So Mika, when he designed this stock, he put a steel recoil lug in. But still, trying to save cost, they just put a mild steel recoil lug in, which nominally has very little strength compared to the aluminum one. It's not a huge improvement. And we're going to show a close-up picture. This particular rifle, 300 Win Mag, it's had three test shots at the factory, and this recoil lug is already damaged. So this is the most important component of a rifle stock. It's not the one you want to go cheap on. The upgrades, there's upgrades from shops around the world. Obviously, we're biased towards ours. But it is a very inexpensive accuracy upgrade to improve the longevity of your rifle system. So let's take this recoil lug out and show you what it's what it looks like outside the stock. So it's relatively simple to remove. You just take a pair of pliers, give it a good yank, comes right out. And this is it. And it's amazing because we see uh, stock manufacturers that are making you know thousand dollar aftermarket stocks go cheap on this component as well. They'll use just saw and cut stock they don't it's not you know precision machined or anything and for something that is ha, plays such a critical role in the accuracy of your rifle uh it, it kind of saddens me and it, i mean i guess shows how much of a gun nerd i am that i get saddened over recoil lugs but um only accurate rifles are interesting so this is an easy way to improve the accuracy of your rifle okay so in the beginning of the video, I promised you some destruction testing, and I have not forgotten that promise. So let me explain the experiment that we're going to do. As I stated earlier, people complained about these stocks because they say they're just plastic Tupperware. And when I was talking to, to Mika over at Saco about the construction of these stocks, he was very, very proud of not only the injection molding process, but of the material they make this out of. So he was telling me about how they actually use long glass fibers when they injection mold these things. And so these stocks, the reason why they're so rigid is because you have long strands of glass all through this material, just like a fiberglass stock. And I can say, I run over one of these with my truck accidentally. Uh, it didn't hurt it at all. The rifle still shot great and it kind of surprised me. And that's why I went to Mika and said, how are these Tupperware stocks so strong? And he was a little insulted that I called it Tupperware. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut a buttstock section and a foreign section out of a stock. We're going to melt it and see if we can see these glass fibers uh, that Mika was talking about. So without further ado, let's destroy this thing. All right, so this was pretty wild. I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, quite honestly, I thought uh, you can see where we cut the buttstock off. We cut the end off. We ended up, uh, don't tell my wife what we melted this in, um, and I was kind of expecting this kind of like endoskeleton spaghetti structure that, and, and the plastic to melt away, something out of a sci-fi movie, and this is definitely a little different, but still just as cool. So uh, what we have here is, this is the forend, this is the buttstock, it just melted into this kind of puddle on here. And, but we have some of these pieces, and, it, and it's just these hair light structures. I mean, you can see all of these fibers in the plastic, just it, it, it's all meshed as one. And that's where we're getting the structural rigidity. I mean, this glass just does not move. I mean, now that it's, it's, it's hard again, I mean, this stuff is, 
is is back to being hard as a rock. I mean, it's not going anywhere. But yeah, take a look at that. So kind of have just this all these pieces of glass holding this stock together. So definitely not just Tupperware. There's there's a lot more science and engineering that has gone into making these stocks than uh, what they what they appear on the outside. So, anyways, really cool uh, ex experiment here, and it's always fun when we get to uh, destruction test things. All right, well, this video was a lot of fun. I didn't think that it was going to be as long as it is. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure what's going to end up at, but. There was a lot more to cover in just the rifle stock than I originally thought. But you can see all the components we pulled off the T3X rifle stock. We had the one that we destroyed, melted down, and this, this is really cool. This, is, this has been a whole lot of fun. So, if you like this type of content, be sure to subscribe. Next week, we're going to do a deep dive into the trigger mechanism on the Tika T3X. So, until the next episode, go get some trigger time.